Hi there, welcome to Mad Art. My name's Michelle and I am a portrait artist. I've offered those um, taster sessions to get um, those of you who would like to draw but just not sure where to start and um, basically get you started. Um, what I'll do is in the first lesson I'll be a quick short lesson and it'll just be a case of going through um, pencils, the different grades of the pencils, the lead and stuff going through the rubbers that you can use and other tools that you can use when you're drawing. Um, I have a set that I bought on Amazon and it wasn't too expensive. Um, you don't even need to go to that extent to buy like a, a big set or anything but it is a good place to start. Um, but even just a pencil and a bit of paper to get you started off with is, is perfect. Um, I also touch on papers and things but to be quite honest it all comes down to personal preference. There are an abundance of papers available, sketch papers and sketch pads by different companies etc. Different textures, different types of paper etc etc. But you'll probably find that there'll be certain papers you use for certain pieces of artwork and other papers that you use for other pieces of artwork. It just depends what kind of artwork you're going to be doing. Um, so yeah. Let's just get started on this first lesson. Okay, so first lesson just to go through some of the materials that you'll need to use. Um, when you first start off sketching, um, a nice little set of sketching pencils is perfect. You'll probably be able to pick a set up for about a pound. It won't be that expensive. But you will find that you'll need a rubber, a putty rubber is good and a standard eraser. Um, and these little tools here... Um, it's just like rolled up paper and it's it's squashed, but they're I call them blending tools. Some people call them smudgers. It just depends. But at the end of the day, they're there instead of like you know if you're working on a piece of art and you want to smooth the lead, you want to take the the actual pencil strokes away and just smudge the lead across the page, and you use your fingers. Well, the problem is you have oils on your hands and oils on your fingers, and when you start smudging with your fingers. Um, you can make um, greasy marks on the paper so you're better with those tools so anyway a nice set of pencils now you'll see if um, I just bring that closer you've got 5H, 4H, 3H, 2H and then HB now your H's are basically hard lead and they come out very light on the page HB is hard black which means that it's a bit of both it's hard but it's got a darker tone to it B is in your soft pencils and they're black basically so as you go down the B, B, I've got 2B, 2B again, 3B, 4B, 4B again, 5B, 6B and 8B. So basically as you go down or as you go up the numbers in the Bs, the softer the lead becomes um, and the darker it becomes. So what I'll do is I'll do a quick like just demonstration on the paper. What I would encourage you to do at this point in time is if you do have a set of pencils, just um, play around and, and do a little bit of shading on the paper as well. It's always really good. So I'll start off with the H's. Okay, so we have the lightest is your highest number. So the lightest in my set is 5H. So if I just this is just a standard printing paper, by the way, people. This is not a sketch paper. It's just a thin, thin, flimsy print paper. But it's fine for this kind of demonstration. So if I just do this, now I'm not pressing hard. And that's my 5H. And then as you go down the numbers, 4H, which is still hard, but not as dark. But you really hardly see any tonal difference at all. Then you've got 3H. And then 2H. So, very light. Um, but really not a great deal. You see a wee bit of tonal difference, but not a, not a lot. So that's your H's. So if I just place them down there. Now, if I go to the HB, which is then, it's um, hard black, which means it's a bit of both. It's still a hard lead, um, but it's darker. So this is your HB. So again, you're still getting that nice, fine 
I'm going to lay it on the paper for this darker. Just get my B pencils here. <clears throat> okay, so we then have the B's now. We'll start off with just B, which is a nice one to go to when you've finally um, started your drawing, you've got everything in place, and you think you want to start putting in a wee bit more deeper tones. B's brilliant for that. As you can see, my B, oh, dear me, let's just, my B is well used. Um, wait there, I'll just sharpen this. My B is well used because it's one of my favourite pencils and as I said to you at the start, you will find that you'll have your favourites um, that you'll use quite a lot. You'll have some that you'll use occasionally and you'll have some that you probably don't use very much at all. So, right, that'll do that too for this demonstration. Anyway. So, here's my B. So we're going on to soft, so I'll just put B up here. And if I just do this. There you go. Still quite smooth on the paper, but um, darker. Now, as you, you you'll find as you go to the softer leads, the greenier it will look on the paper. So if you want a really scribbly kind of grainy looking picture, the bees are good for that. So my next one is two B. Two B, you love to be. There we go. So it gets softer. So I'm not really pressing hard at all, um, and you can see it on the on the page. 3B. And then we have 4B. And then it jumps right up to 8B. And 8B is very soft. So as you see, if you can see it, you'll notice that it is a lot grainier. Now, if I use my blending tool, just to let you see how light they are once they're blended. So again, a little smudging tool here, which is perfect if you want, if you don't want to see the pencil strokes, if you want it like, if it's a face, and you want it to be quite smooth, these are perfect. So if I just blend that, do is I'll just use this to keep my blend tool clean so that when I'm um, rubbing the lead I'm not moving lead from one area to the next. Now this was your B which was just, no HB sorry. See as you've gone on to the bees how much darker it is. Okay. It's so much easier to move around on the paper as well because it's softer. See if I kept going it would just spread it because it's so soft. So there you go, that's all your pencils. Um, you will find, as I've said to you probably numerous times, you're probably going to use one or two pencils that will be your favourites. Um, one or two that will be ones that are occasional use and some of them you probably won't really use very much at all. If you're like me and you do fine art and realistic art, then you will use um, your H pencils to get started off. And then you'll move up through the B's. And the only time you're going to use the A-B's is when you really need to go into the deep, deep tones. Um, so they'll be used, but very occasional use. So there you are. That's your pencils and your smudging tool. Again, you've seen what the smudging tool does, how good it is. And when I start doing drawings and things, you'll be able to see 
um, how it works as well. Now the other things that you have, well obviously I had to sharpen my pencil and I used a standard sharpener which is fantabby dozy to get that point if you need a really fine point and you will find that you'll be sharpening your pencils quite a lot because you will want that fine point for certain things especially if you're doing animals and you're wanting the fur and you're wanting the 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 hairs to, to stand out then yeah you'll be wanting a fine sharp pencil but other artists to get that fine point for longer can use this little tool here which is a knife and a lot of artists prefer to actually sharpen their pencils with the knife I don't, but it's everybody to their own preference. This is just a tool for holding um, to give you that extra length. I don't use it very often, but you might find that you'll use it if you are standing at an easel and you want to stand back a good bit. It's good for that. Um, this is your standard eraser. Now this I would class as for rubbing out, for taking the, the paper, the, the, the lead completely off the paper. But then you have this, which is called, what well, I call it a putty rubber. It's called many different things, but it's pliable. Um, and what this, I use this for, and what I would encourage you to use this for, is um, to lift the lead off the paper. So if you're just wanting to lift some of the lead, like you've, you've shaded in an area under the eye, for instance, that's just a little bit too dark, and you want to just lift some of the lead, but not all of it, then this is perfect for that. It's also good... You have to keep it in your hand, keep it warm and keep it moulded so that you can soften it and use it, just like what I'm doing just now. But what's also good for it is you can mould it into a sharp point and then use it, if I can show you here, to take the lead and have like, you might not see that because it's so delicate, but just to lift it a little bit. You know, if you've got hairs or whatever, and they're white. All right. That's your putty rubber. So you'll find, um, possibly, that when you're working, you'll probably have that in one hand, and you'll keep pressing and moulding it all the time to keep it soft, because that's what I do. I've constantly got this in my hand, and I'm constantly pressing it and everything until it's ready to use, because once it's soft and once it's been kind of, warmed up a little bit in that, it then does lift the lead off the page quite well, as I've just demonstrated. Okay, also in this kit, there is um, little sticks here, which are graphite sticks. You've got soft, medium and hard, okay? Um, so it's just like your pencils, except it's just in a stick form. And that would probably be good if you're working on a large area and it was a really, really large, um, sketchy kind of picture. Um, again, this also comes with a set of charcoals and you've got hard, medium, soft as well. Um, so again, the, the sticks, it's a bit like having like soft pencils, pastel sticks or something like that. You'd probably use them if you're working on a really, really large surface. Um, so I'll just put this back in. Here we are. And this little tool, um, I don't know if I explained it already, but this is just really for keeping your your blending tools clean. Um, what you'll find is when you are using them, you'll see that it does, you know, the lead does transfer onto it and it does get quite dirty, which means that you can take a blank piece of paper and rub it in lead's transfer now sometimes i do do that um but i would probably recommend just keeping that clean and all i do is just run it on this rough sandpaper if you like and just give it a clean so that you can then um, keep it clean and use it again without transferring lead that you don't want Okay, pop that back in there, pop this back in here. Right, so that's your first lesson um, on pencils. Um, paper, again, I did say I would touch on paper, but I'm not going to do too much on paper. Um, I've got a sketch pad here, um, and it's um, smooth, um, but heavyweight. 
Now, it's really just heavyweight, it's just like, I think, the thickness of your paper. And I've started a little drawing here, which a little squirrely drawing, I'm not, um, I'm not on very far with it. But um, this is smooth. Now, I quite like the smooth when I'm doing um, faces, like human faces and things, because it's easy to move the lead across paper. But a lot of people like roughness so that there's a texture in the paper so that it holds the lead better. So again, it comes down to personal preference. And this is quite thick. This paper is quite thick. And that's really good because when you're working, if you're like me, I usually rest the palm of my hand like this when I'm working. And there is like oils and things that will transfer. So if you are doing that, see if I'm kind of scrap your paper here. Um, if you are working away and you don't want your paper to get all messy and smudgy and everything what you would normally do and what a lot of people do is say I was working if I come into here say if I was working on this area here but I was moving across and my hand was going to be leaning here now there's quite a lot of lead in that area so I would just put the paper over it and then start working away on this area so that I wasn't transferring or transferring oils or smudging the, the graphite that's already on here um, so that's another tip but paper I would just suggest um, grab yourself a, a decent little sketch pad initially work away on your sketch pad get to know the pencils and things do some doodles and things and see how you get on um, and then as you're preparing to do more and more compositions um, then yeah look at better papers and I've got a, a large large I think it's A2 sketch pad maybe yeah because that's it A2 sketch pad and the, the paper's a lot thicker um, and even at that um, when I was sitting working on it the, the paper was waving like this so when I was finished the, the piece what I had to do is take it out of the pad lay it flat and put something heavy on the top of it to to flatten the paper out again before I went to frame it so it's just these little things that you'll come across and, and that's basically you'll come across that when you start um, doing some sketches for yourself it's just like a trial and error thing okay thank you